Hi guys, what's up? It's Alex here, and today we're going to be doing a preview of the next round of the Formula 1 Championship from Bahrain. Now I've got some more go-karting footage here. I went a couple of days ago and it's quite enjoyable. Uh, you can see it in the background. There's a problem in about a minute's time, which you might be a bit entertained by, but yeah, we'll go out to the track and um, yeah, so let's get into the preview of this year's Bahrain Grand Prix. Now I want to go down all the winners of the Bahrain Grand Prix over the years because I think that might be interesting to seeing who might do well and might not do so well. Uh, 2004 was won by Michael Schumacher, 2005 and 6 was won by Fernando Alonso, 2007 and 8 was won by Felipe Massa, 2009 was won by Jensen Button, 2010 Fernando Alonso won the race. Then in 2011 it was cancelled because of the protests in Bahrain and 2012 it was looking likely that the protests were going to stop the race again. Uh, well, we did go there to Bahrain okay. in 2012 and Kimi Raikkonen was just held off by Sebastian Vettel so Sebastian Vettel won that race. Now I want to look at this logically because if we look at our Ferrari drivers at the moment, Felipe Massa and Fernando Alonso, and see how many times they have won this race since it was first held in 2004, we have seen that they have won it five out of the eight times that it has been held. And actually they have won five out of the last seven races that have been won around here. So Fernando Alonso and Felipe Massa are definitely people to be looking out for around here. Because they look fast, they're on form, both of them are looking fast this year. And I wouldn't be surprised to see both of them right up there going for the chance of this win but let's go through all the teams in order of their championship constructors positions and where I think they're going to be this year's Bahrain Grand Prix. First off then we'll talk about Red Bull as they are leading the constructors championship by five points at the moment. If we look at their history over the Bahrain Grand Prix they've won one race around here since they started coming in I think 2005 was Red Bull's first year so not a great record for Red Bull I mean obviously they've been pretty dominant since 2009-2010 and um, it's been really hard to see whether the Red Bull has been on form, but the last race that was held around here, Sebastian Vettel won. And we've got to think about that because the cars are not that much different from last year, especially the, the Red Bull and the Lotuses are, are pretty similar in terms of speed of where they were last year. So I think it is going to be one of those races where Red Bull are probably going to be up there for the win. Obviously the Chinese Grand Prix was a little bit of a blip for Red Bull, they didn't really have the pace to go for the win, but somehow they did manage to get fourth position for Sebastian Vettel, which after qualifying night, I don't think they really expected, so that's a good result for them at the end of the day, but I think there is more to come in Bahrain, I think it's a track that really suits the Red Bull more than most cars, but never forget about Ferrari, because they are the team on the charge at the moment after obviously winning the last race and having good results for Felipe Massa in all of the races so far. I would not be surprised to see Ferrari and we'll talk about them right now. So only five points behind Red Bull in the Constructors' Championship, so much better on pace wise than they were last year so I wouldn't be surprised to see Ferrari up the top because last year it wasn't the best Bahrain Grand Prix for them but I think you know they've got to take some positives away from it because they really didn't have the car last year to go for the win but you know they did manage to get some alright results there seventh position for Fernando Alonso in the race nearly a minute behind the leader though so we will take that into consideration and last year Felipe Massa managed to get ninth only about 10 seconds behind his teammates so I think it is a track that Felipe Massa and Fernando Alonso can do well at but it's just where they have the right car at the right time, the right setup. But if they do have all those things, I think Fernando Alonso or Felipe Massa is the people you need to watch out for in this race. Because the Ferrari is fast, both their drivers are fast, and this year I think is the year that Ferrari can mount the challenge to Red Bull in the championship more seriously than ever before. 2010, they were always a bit behind. 2011, they were just so far off the pace. 2012, they started with a horrible car and managed to scrape back some sort of pace towards the end. But 2013, it looks like it is more Ferrari's year than ever before against Red Bull. So be sure to make sure that you're watching the Ferraris throughout this race. They might play a different strategy, but I'm sure they'll be right there at the end of the day. Next up in the Constructors' Championship is Lotus Renault, only 18 points behind Red Bull Racing, even though Grosjean has not had the best start to the year. Now, Lotus were really strong here last year, and I wouldn't be surprised to see the mount the challenge on Red Bull and Ferrari for this win this year, because I honestly think that the Lotus was the fastest car in the last race in China, and I really think they probably could have won that race if they hadn't had such a dodgy start, and obviously got caught up in traffic throughout the race. Uh, but, you know, Fernando Alonso is a bit of a magician in that car and he can sort of scrape the positions when he needs to so and it's really hard to tell who would have came out on top of there wasn't traffic and a bad start and a whatever 
but um, you know, I think Kimi Raikkonen is definitely the guy you need to look out for in this race. But don't discount Roman Grosjean. He's had a bit of a up and down start to the season. He scraped points in all the races, I think. So I think Grosjean is the guy you need to watch out for. I think he's going to be a bit better here than he has been in previous races because this was the real race last year where he started to show that he is a fast driver. He can get good points every single race. And I think that Kimi Raikkonen and Roman Grosjean is a pairing you need to watch out for here in Bahrain. So next up in the Constructors' Championship at the moment is Mercedes with 52 points. So a good 25, 26 points behind Red Bull in the Championship at the moment. But showing that the Mercedes has got pace. It was fast in the Chinese Grand Prix. It was fast in Malaysia. They could even challenge Red Bull at certain points in the race in Malaysia. China, not so much. I don't think they had the pace to be in the top three really. I think that Red Bull was the third best team there after Lotus and Ferrari. But honestly, I think that Mercedes probably won't go so well here. They haven't had the best of races over the last couple of years. We look back to last year, Nico Rosberg got a fifth position in Bahrain, but it wasn't such a good race for Michael Schumacher. He only managed to get one point in that Mercedes, but it's definitely going to be a race down to strategy because if we look last year, after fifth position, there was three cars, three or four cars, right behind Nico Rosberg, and he was so close to losing out that position. In the space of three seconds behind Rosberg last year, there was De Resta, Alonso, and then Hamilton. That's three different cars right behind Rosberg. So be sure to check out Mercedes. I don't think they're going to be the greatest this year, but they might be a team to watch if they play the strategy right. Next up, I want to move on to a team that has really made progress over the last race in China, and that is McLaren Mercedes. They had a really good race here uh, a couple of years ago, but now recently it hasn't been such a good weekend for the McLaren team. They only managed to get one point paying position last year, and that was obviously Lewis Hamilton in 8th position. And with Lewis Hamilton gone, we look down to 18th position. Jensen Button with an exhaust and differential problem last year, which meant he ended up 18th, still ahead of a couple of cars, but obviously that's one or two laps down and a bit of disappointing for them last year but I think McLaren is the team making huge amount of progress look between Malaysia and China look between Australia and China look at the gap that they have pulled on the main guys they weren't even in the top 10 in Australia in my opinion in terms of race pace they were there with the Williams and maybe even there with the Caterhams and the Marushas they were really that slow in Australia and I think it was really the drivers that might have scraped back a couple of tenths but uh, I think that they're probably just ahead of the Williams in reality I hope that was a bit of an exaggeration but they really weren't that fast in Australia and they pulled a lot of gap back in China and Malaysia and McLaren is the team on the move in terms of development they have definitely got the development race on board them at the moment and sitting there equal on points with Force India in the Constructors and not an half too bad of such a bad start to the season for them. Sergio Perez not really impressing as much as many people thought. Many people think now that they really should have picked Hulkenberg over obviously Perez but Hulkenberg only scraped a couple of points in the last couple of races so it's hard to tell which one of them really would have done better but definitely McLaren is the one on the charge in terms of the development race. As I said drawing with McLaren in the Constructors' Championship at the moment is 4C in the area. That means all of the Mercedes teams are 4th, 5th and 6th in the Constructors, so they're close there. But in terms of points, it's really Mercedes out in front. But Force India didn't have such a bad race last year. They don't really have weekends where they can finish 6th. But they finished sixth here last year in Bahrain with uh, Paul de Resta doing a great job. And he was only two seconds, just under two seconds behind Rosberg for fifth position. Not such a great weekend for Hulkenberg. He ended up in 12th position last year. But the Force India, it looks like it's pretty fast. I mean, in China, they didn't really call the strategy right. but And it was obviously an unlucky race for Sutil. But Force India is another team I think is developing well. And I think can be there in front of the Saubers. And they're at the bottom end of the top 10. But I definitely want to see how Force India can do here in Bahrain. I think it was a shame that Sutil got knocked out of the Chinese Grand Prix. Because that would have been a weekend. I think that Sutil could have got some good points. And um, yeah, disappointing. But I think Force India will come back to Bahrain and score lots of points. And hopefully they will. Because they're one of my favourite teams. Now, next up in the Constructors' Championship is actually Toro Rosso. They are ahead of Sauber, which is a great thing for them because they've obviously been fighting demons over the last couple of years, I could say, to try and beat William Sauber and Force India. And they're only seven points behind Force India after Force India have had such a better car. And I think Toro Rosso are doing a mighty job here at the moment. And, um, you know, last year was a great weekend for them because obviously in qualifying, Daniel Ricciardo took sixth position on the grid. And that was an absolutely amazing 
day for them. And I think they can repeat that this time. I think they can be there, squabbling with the Mercedes, maybe even the McLarens. I don't really know. It's hard to tell because you don't know where they are going to be in terms of pace. But I think they are creeping towards the pace of the McLaren, the Mercedes, the Red Bull, the Ferrari. But not, not fast, but they are creeping towards it. They are doing a good development race in terms of their teams around them. Williams, sluggish. Also, the sound was pretty sluggish. Force India is doing pretty well. So I think at the moment, they're, they're fighting the Force India for the bottom end of the top 10. And I really think that Ricardo and Vern have got the pace within them to probably get up the position to probably get a top 10 finish at the end of the day. And, um, you know, it would be good to see maybe Ricardo or Vern can repeat that great qualifying from last year. It's all down to time and what will happen. But I think it will be a great race for Toro Rosso. Hopefully they can get some points because they've been deserving it for the last couple of years. And finally, they got the car that can score points consistently and it's great to see. So next up in the Constructors' Championship, it is Sauber. They've not had the greatest start of the season, even though Hulkenberg in the two races has entered has came away with points. It hasn't been the greatest amount of points. He led in China after having a good strategy and keeping up with Vettel, but it's just a shame that really the car didn't come to him at the end of the day and his pace on some of the tyres was really quite slow. So it's a bit of a shame in that sort of aspect, but um, I think that Sauber will hopefully improve the car. I think... You know, over the season they might be able to get onto the podium at one point if they continue with the upgrades, but it's kind of hard to tell because, you know, they started last year with a pretty decent car. They upgraded it through the season consistently, but it wasn't amazing. And I think at the moment they need some amazing development to really get up there with the top teams and get a podium or so. And I think that is the aim because that's what Hulkenberg moved over to South before was they had four podiums last year and this year it hasn't, has, you know, hasn't really been such a great start for them, which is a bit of a shame. And, um, but you know, it's really going to be down to how they played the strategy again with all these teams. The new ties don't seem to be as durable as the, you know, the old ones that we had. But I think that's a good thing. It's great for the sport. Uh, obviously, Pirelli maybe not so good for them because they don't have such a good name for good tyres. But um, I suppose they, re they really want to just deliver a great and entertaining race. And I think that's what they did in China, which meant it was such a good race and really, really good. Uh, but anyway, Sauber, yeah, I think they're going to be trying to get into the point. It's going to be a bit of a struggle, I think. In Bahrain if the Force Indias, if the Toro Rossos don't have problems because really they've not really got the pace at the moment to really challenge for that top 10 but it's just Hulkenberg really grabbing everything he can and getting the points and I think he's going to be overshadowed at the end of the season sadly for that Ferrari seat for a Red Bull seat just because the car this year has not been very good. So now we get into the bottom three teams and there have been three teams that haven't scored this year. First off, Williams really not had the greatest start to the season of the year. I think this is one of their worst starts ever to a campaign. Pastor Maldonado lies 20th in the championship at the moment with Bottas 16th. Bottas is the highest placed person that hasn't scored a point. But really disappointing times for Williams after coming off a race winning 2012. They expected so much more and really at the moment the car is just not there to get the wins. And obviously anywhere near the points I think at the moment it's a struggle. I mean they finished on the lead lap in China but really they didn't have the pace to you know, str struggle with the top teams. Let's just say that. I mean obviously everyone was struggling in the last race and I think it was just disappointing that the Williams took such a step backwards because along with Force India they're one of my favourite teams and I really think that they probably could have done a little bit better if they'd maybe stick with last year's car but we don't really know I think Maldonado is a fast driver Bottas is a fast driver and it'll just time will tell whether they will get points in the season I suppose but it doesn't look bright for Williams so far in 2013. Next up in the Constructors is Marussia. They've had a great start to the season. I know a lot of people will say, well, they haven't scored any points, so why are they having a great start to the season? Look at Jules Bianchi. He was nearly on the back of the Williams at the end of the Chinese Grand Prix. He nearly overtook Bottas at certain parts. Jules Bianchi is a star of the future, and I know Rapid Scorpion is a huge fan of Jules Bianchi and you can certainly see why he's a fast little kid there and obviously he's not a kid he's like 23 24 years old and he is more experienced than Max Chilton and Max Chilton is still putting a really good result there he nearly beat Charles Peake in China and he beat Van der Gaard so I think Chilton is learning obviously he's had two or three less years around in the sport than Jules Bianchi so he doesn't really know the car as well and I think he's going to be taking a lot of feedback from Jules Bianchi in learning. But Max Schilton and Jules Bianchi is a great pairing for Marussia and really got an experienced head in terms of Bianchi. And obviously a very young driver likes Max Schilton. And you could say Jules Bianchi's young. I know he is, but he's 
still got a lot of experience in a Formula 1 car, obviously with Force India and Ferrari. So, great starts to the season for Mauricio. I see them actually scoring a point for, before Williams. They've got such a great amount of development over the last couple of races. I honestly see them scoring points before the Williams do. So, the place that was normally occupied by HRT is now occupied by the team that was actually the best of the teams last year. And that was the back teams, by the way. And that is Caterham. Now, at the moment, they really don't seem to have the pace to challenge to Marussia. I mean, Charles Peake is more experienced than Max Chilton by a year and a bit. So we know that he's going to be a bit ahead of Max Chilton in terms of race pace. And that's probably why he's ahead of them in the championship, because he's got that extra year's experience. But I honestly said, as I just said there, that I see Marussia scoring points before Williams, just because the current development of that Williams is bad. But I see the caterer maybe challenging the Williams in a couple of races' time, depending on how the upgrades go for Williams and uh, how the upgrades go for the caterer. It's just going to be a sort of time will tell thing there. Uh, but it's an interesting championship battle at the back. Obviously, Marussia coming off a not so great 2012. Obviously, they beat HRT to the end, but 2011 and 2010 were not that good for Marussia. And I think finally now we're seeing the true pace of what that team can get. Yeah. and really great from Jules Bianchi I'm not gonna lie uh, but Caterham as I said not really where they wanted to be but I'm sure they'll try and develop the car I think that they can develop the car but it's just a matter of time and money whether they can because obviously they're a bit underfunded at the moment our Caterham um, but um, yeah that's pretty much it for this video guys I've really enjoyed making this one hopefully you've enjoyed the go-karting footage in the background if it's still a bit bumpy I've got to actually I've got a chest mount for my GoPro so I might use that but uh, if you want me to use my chest mount in my next GoPro video let me know in the comment section because that's really going to help me out to make these videos better uh, so yeah leave that in the comment section I'm really going to be interesting to see what you say and um, yeah that's pretty much it have a wonderful day and uh, hopefully in the next race in Bahrain it will be as great as the Chinese Grand Prix. So I'll see you all there. Have a wonderful day. It's been Axe and I'm out of here. Goodbye.